good morning students in my first lecture i have already discussed about the difference between this biology and biotechnology where i have already told you that what are the differences between this particular uh, this living cell and i have also mentioned that how this biology and biotechnology are interrelated with each other my today's lecture is on glimpses of the microbial world to live a well informed self existence modern world it is becoming increasingly necessary to have the knowledge of the tiny particles which are present in this universe and these tiny particles are so small that we cannot see it in our naked eye and if we see that particular structure we categorize them into different groups our today's lecture is on one of such micro creatures which is present in this universe is called bacteria today in this lecture we'll be learning the architecture of a bacterial cell now in my earlier class i have already mentioned you about the cell and i have also told you that cell is the basic unit of life based on the cellular organization the entire cells can be divided into two major categories one is called the prokaryotic cell another is called the eukaryotic cell prokaryotic cell it what does it mean pro means primitive carrion means nuclear that means obviously this group of microorganisms are very primitive in nature and obviously bacteria is one of such example eukaryotes are the developed cell where this nucleus has got its own nuclear membrane which is not there in case of the prokaryotic organism now if we see the overview of this prokaryotic cell then we can find that this prokaryotic cells are the earliest organism in this universe and evolved alone for 1.5 billion years prokaryotes can be found in everywhere in every niche available on this planet based on its structure based on its its uh, this different cellular organization or structure the prokaryotes can be divided into prokaryotes can be divided into two major groups one is called one is called the archibacteria another is the eubacteria archibacteria is considered to be the most primitive type of bacteria which is otherwise known as the extremophile eubacteria is the true bacteria so we will be learning that what 
and obviously it is what mentioning that this bacteria this uh, prokaryotes are unicellular in nature that means it is having a single cell that means how this cell is is whatever may be its shape and size it is only a single cell which is doing all its metabolic activities. Now, let us learn systematically the architecture of a particular prokaryotic cell. Now, if we see the entire bacterial world based on its shape, the bacteria can be categorized and if we see its shape, we will find that some of these bacteria are round or spherical in nature, some are rod and some are spiral in nature. Now, these are the, this, these are some of this classification, some are comma shaped, some of these bacteria are neither round nor rod, it is a oval shaped bacteria and based on this we can categorize the entire bacterial world into different segments. Now, if it is a spherical shaped bacteria, we call it as coccus and this group of bacteria, if we see its size, it varies from 0.5 to 3 micrometer in diameter. In case of Coccobacillus, that is the oval shaped, shaped bacteria or oval shaped bacteria, its size varies from 1.5 to 4 micrometer in diameter. Vibrio is a comma shaped bacteria and if we see its size, it ranges from 0.2 to 2 micrometer in diameter and 0.5 to 100 micrometer length. In case of bacillus, the size of this group of bacteria varies from its size is varies from 0.2 to 2 micrometer in diameter and 0.5 to 20 micrometer in length. In in case of spiral shaped bacteria like spirillum, 0.2 to 2 micrometer diameter and 0.5 to 100 micrometer length. In case of spiral kitty, this size varies from 0.2 to 3 micrometer in diameter and 0.5 to 250 micrometer in length. So, from this particular information, what we can conclude? We can conclude that the minimum size of this bacteria irrespective of its shape, it can vary from 0.2 micrometer to 250 micrometer. So, this is the size of this bacteria. Just you can see that it is in the tune of micrometer. So, how small you can understand. Now, if we see this particular bacteria under the microscope, then with different magnification, if we see, we can find that there are different organelles which are present in this particular bacteria. Now, based on these organelles and their arrangement, the entire bacterial cell structure or the prokaryotic cells can be divided into three major groups that is the appendages, cell envelope and cytoplasm. This appendages means the outer protecting layer which is present external to this cell wall of this bacteria. Now, what are those? These are the flagella. This may be 
the pili this may be the fimbri immediately followed by this appendages are the cell envelope where we can see the glycocalyx that is the capsule or the slime layer and here this is the external protective layer which is present on the outer surface of this bacterial cell wall and we can see followed by this glycocalyx is the cell wall and then cell membrane. When we are considering this cytoplasm, this cytoplasm is the cell pool the internal liquid or the internal material which is getting protected by the cell membrane and the cell wall of this bacteria followed by this appendages. So, if we see the cell the fluid internal fluid we can find that it has got cell pool it, it has ribosomes granules and nucleoid or the chromosome that is the genetic material which is present inside the bacteria. Now, let us come one by one to each of these organelles which are present in the bacterial cell. Now, this bacterial appendages, this flagella, if we see this flagella can be divided into three major parts. One is the filament that is the long thin helical like structure which is mainly composed of the proteins. The protein is one of the biomolecules which are present in this particular living cell. It has got the hook like structure that is curled and sealed and vessel body that is the stack of rings firmly anchored on the cell wall of this particular bacteria. Now, if we see the particular structure of this flagella, then we can find see this is the filament, this is the hook and this is the vessel body and this vessel body here different type of rings are there. This is the M ring that means the part of this ring is attached to this cell internal that inner membrane of the cell followed by this S ring and this P ring and L ring is present on the outer membrane of this cell wall of this bacteria. That means, on the cell wall of this bacteria, this flagella like structure is inserted and it is attached with this cell wall. Now, here this particular, if we see that the diameter of this particular filament, we can find that it is 3.5 nanometer this ID and OD is 17 nanometer and here the entire vessel, vessel bodies which where this entire this structure is attached is 27 nanometer and if we see the filament which is inserted in this O ring has got this ID is 7 nanometer and OD is OD of this uh, this this filament is 10 nanometer and this O ring if we see the OD of this O ring which is attached with this membrane cell wall and cell membrane of this bacteria is 22.5 nanometer in structure. Just imagine how thin this particular filament which is attached and which can rotate. Now, what is this? 
if we see this the arrangement and this is the cell wall and this is the cell membrane in this way this particular filament this particular uh, flagella is inserted inside the cell wall and here this particular o ring to which this filament this hook and filament is attached it has got the capacity to move 360 degree. So, when it moves 360 degree it needs the energy and that energy is in the form of ATP and this and with that energy it can rotate this flagella can rotate and this is the actual structure of this flagella. Now, if we see the arrangement of this flagella in any bacterial cell then we can find that this flagella may be a single flagella at one particular end of this bacteria and that is this particular arrangement is called monotrichal. If a small bunches of flagella arising from one end of the cell is called lophotrichus, when the flagella at both the ends of the cells are present are called amphitrichus and when this flagella is all together uniformly distributed throughout the bacterial cell it is called peritrichus arrangement. So, this way this flagellal arrangements are there. So, what is the main function of this flagella? It helps in mainly it helps in locomotion of the bacterial cell. Next to this flagella is the fimbri. Fimbri is a hair like structure which is present uniformly on the outer wall of this bacterial cell and its main function is to adhesion to the other cell. That means, with this hair like structure one cell is getting associated with another cell and in this way they can form the colony like structure. So, in this way this bacterial structure this colony is getting formed. So, when we are seeing any bacterial colony n number of such micro creatures are there. So, they are associated with each other with the help of this fine hair like structure. I have already mentioned you that there is a another external growth which is present on the bacterial cell wall is the pili. It is a rigid tubular structure which is made up of, of a particular protein which is called the pilin protein. It is found in the gram negative bacterial cell. Now, I have told you based on the size that the bacteria can be differentiated, it can be grouped. Now, I will be coming to further classification, but now you just understand, uh, you just take it as granted that gram negative is one of the another group of bacteria which is there and to that group of bacteria this pili are found. What is the function of this pili? This pili, now you see the electron microscopic view, then we can find that say this is the pili of gram negative bacteria. Now, it helps in conjugation when it is going for a reproduction. Now, one cell is coming in contact close to another cell. So, see this is one cell and this is another cell. So, this is the pilin which is donating partly the genetic material from the donor cell 
to the recipient cell and in this way the genetic material is getting transferred from the donor cell to the recipient cell and in this way this pilin protein this is the major function of pilin and if we see the another other uh, function it also helps in adhesion so this is the major function of the different appendages which are present on the outer wall of the bacterial cell now coming to the cell envelope now we can divide the cell cell envelope into three distinct groups one is called the outermost one is the glycocalyx which is followed by the cell wall and then the cell membrane that means the glycocalyx is the outermost and then cell wall and the cell membrane is the that layer which and after this the cell pool are there that means it, one side is exposed to the cytoplasmic fluid which is present inside the cell now if we magnify this cell wall of this particular bacteria then we can find that this glycocalyx is the coating of molecule external to the cell wall made up of sugars and protein we can get two types of glycocalyx one is called capsule which is tightly organized and tightly attached to the cell wall another is the slimy layer which is loosely organized and attached so see this is the slimy layer which is loosely organized and this capsule has got a definite structure now if we see the structure of this capsule this and its uh, composition we can find that this is a kind of slime layer which is covering the outside of the cell wall it is composed of thick polysaccharide and it is used to stick cells together and it is also used as a food reservoir it is also there to protect the cell from desiccation and from the other toxic chemicals now if we see this capsule and the slime layer then we can find that this is it is the external attachment which are there and its main function of this particular uh, capsule or this glycocalyx is that it inhibits killing of this by this white blood cell and it is also acting as an as a receptor of the cell so this is the major function of this glycocalyx immediately below this glycocalyx is the cell wall now if we see the composition biochemical composition of the cell wall we can find that this cell wall is made up of glycoprotein which is one of this example is a murine its purpose purpose is to provide strength and rigidity to the cell it is permeable to the solute now if we see the biochemical components which are there in this glycoprotein structure then we can find that it is mainly the in the bacterial cell one of the major component which is present is the peptidoglycan now what is peptidoglycan peptidoglycan is a polymer where we have the sugar and amino acids which are tightly binded with each other it is a very very unique as far as the bacterial cell wall is concerned now if we classify further this type of this peptidoglycan the components which are present we can categorize this particular uh, this polymers 
into NAM and NAG. What is NAM and what is NAG? NAM is in acetyl muramic acid and NAG is in acetyl glucosamine. Now see here this it is the composition of amino acid and sugar. Other way we can tell that it is an amino sugar. So here these two polymers this are present in the peptidoglycan chain and this particular components are also called as glycan chain and amino acids are attached to this particular glycan chain and amino acid means amino in, in this particular bio, biological molecule it is a asymmetric carbon atom in one this this R group is present and it has got the amino and, and carboxyl group. So, this is the amino acid where one amino end is there another carboxyl end is there and here this R group one this R group is varying from one amino acid to another. Now say for example in case of glycine this R group is H. In case of alanine this R group is CH3 and in this way the structure and the composition of this particular amino acid and characteristics of this amino acids are getting varied. So, this is these amino acids are linked together that means here we have seen it has got one amino group and here one carboxyl group is there. So, when one amino group of one amino acid is getting linked with the carboxyl group of the second amino acid it is called the peptide linkage and in this way one amino acid and another amino acid they form a chain like structure. So, I will be telling you the structure of these amino acid how they form and what is this bonding called this bonding is the peptide bonding and when this peptide linkages are there one molecule of water is being released from this particular bonding. So, I will tell you the details about this amino acid its structure and function. So, now for easy understanding let us consider that it has got this particular amino terminal and carboxyl ter terminal and this particular amino acids are getting linked with this NAM and NAG. This is in acetyl glucosamine and in acetyl muramic acid. Now, if we see the structure of peptidoglycan, then we can find that it is the unique macromolecule composed of a repeating fragment of long glycan chains cross linked by the short peptide fragment. So, as I have told, it provides strong flexible support to keep bacteria from bursting or collapsing because of the change of the osmotic pressure. So, if we are seeing the structure and the composition then these are the NAM NAG are the glycan chain and they are just a linear chain and this way this linear chains are there and you see this amino acids are getting linked with one chain to another and this way they form a matrix like structure and here this network is nothing but it is the polymerization of NAM NAG that is the glycan chains with the amino or peptide uh, cross linking. Now, if we see that gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Now, I have already told you that gram negative bacteria has got pilin, pili, the pilin proteins are there, pili is present in gram negative bacteria. What is gram positive and what is 
gram negative bacteria. Now, this is a particular test based on the cell wall composition of bacteria. <coughs> now, if we see and magnify and if we draw the cell wall composition of two different groups of bacteria, then we can find that there are certain changes in one group and some differences are there so, and it can be distinctly differentiate between one group to the other group. Now, in case of gram positive, now how, why it is called gram, gram staining, gram positive, gram negative? Because this particular test was developed by the scientist called Hans Christian Gram and based on his name it is called gram positive and gram negative. In case of gram positive bacteria, it has been seen that, that say here the cell membrane is there, here the periplasmic space is there in both the cases, the peptidoglycan chains are there, here also peptidoglycan is there. Say here outer membrane is there which is not there in this group of bacteria and here the some other this lipopolysaccharide porins here some other complex membrane proteins and uh, etcetera are there lipoproteins are there. But in another case we are getting the tequic acid, lipotequic acid and so on that means some differences are there. What is the difference? It has got a thick layer of peptidoglycan. Lipotechoic acid and tecoic acids are present here which is not there. Here this peptidoglycan chain is very thin and if we see that it has got the outer membrane and some complex biological molecules which are there in case of gram negative bacteria and it differentiate that way from this gram positive bacteria. Now, if we see the further electronic microscopic view, electron microscopic view tells that, that it has got a cell membrane followed by this periplasmic space then peptidoglycan thin layer of peptidoglycan followed by the outer layer C which is not there in case of gram positive bacteria. In gram positive bacteria you see this is the cell membrane followed by periplasmic space and peptidoglycan and this way gram positive bacteria is different from gram negative bacteria. Then how we can differentiate the one group to another? How? First of all, it is very micro in structure and then how we will be differentiating and that is cell based on the cell wall composition. There must be some test which can differentiate this gram positive from this gram negative. Now, if we see that there are certain techniques which can differentiate one group of bacteria to other group. Now, now, irrespective of this bacteria, if we are taking some unknown bacteria and if we form the smear of this bacteria and to this, the two different dyes, if we add, that means crystal violet is one dye and Safranin is the another dye. These are the two dyes which are used for this gram staining purpose. Now, here this crystal violet when it is added to this smear of this bacteria, first it is going and with the gram iodine uh, solution, it makes a very uh, this um, form complex and it is getting attached to this particular bacterial cell wall. Now, after this, uh, this addition of this crystal violet, we are just washing this particular uh, bacterial smear 
with the organic solvent. Now, what is happening when we are adding this organic solvent? This organic solvent may be alcohol, it may be alcohol and acetone mixture. So, what we are doing uh, adding? We are adding this alcohol uh, or the organic solvent alcohol acetone mixture in excess and we are just washing out the excess dye which is present. In one case, we have seen that this bacteria can retain the crystal violet gram iodine complex within its outer wall of this cell. In another cell where this peptidoglycan chain is very thin and it cannot retain this gram iodine and crystal violet complex and it is coming out of this cell. And then when we are just counter staining this cell with this saffronin dye as in one group as they have already retained this crystal violet color, they cannot once again bind with the new counter dye and here those group of bacteria which do not have any uh, such a uh, this uh, dye within the cell wall, they can once again bind, bind with this red dye and when we are just washing it in running mild running tap water, then one group of bacteria which are retaining this crystal violet dye, they look violet or blackish violet in color, another group of bacteria looks very red in color and this group of bacteria are called gram positive which are giving this crystal violet color and another group is called gram negative which is red in color and this way this bacteria can be classified as gram positive and gram negative that means pili is present in this group of bacteria where peptidoglycan chain is very very thin and outer membrane is there. So, this is the structure of cell wall of bacteria. In some cases, we can find the bacteria having without cell wall and some cases bacteria with chemically unique cell wall. That means, this type of bacteria is coming under the category of this archaebacteria. So, these are the very primitive group of bacteria and here they have certain change in this cell wall composition and that is the reason why this we are calling it unique cell wall of this group of bacteria. And some group of bacteria they do not have any cell wall within it and that is Mycoplasma is one of that example of that group of bacteria. Now, coming to this cell membrane. Now, below this cell wall is the cell membrane. Now, here uh, this when we are talking about this cell membrane, we have to have the knowledge of another macromolecule which is present in this particular cell membrane is the lipid. Now, lipid is a water insoluble molecule and if we see the structure of fatty acid, we can find that fatty acid has got the chain like structure and it has got the ending with the carboxyl group which is polar in nature. That means, we can tell this fatty acid that polar head and non-polar tail. So, if this is the structure of the simple lipid molecule, this fatty acid uh, molecules, then we can tell that this is the hydrophilic end of this uh, lipid molecule and it has got a hydrophobic tail. So, here in this cell membrane, we can get a bilayer of lipid and this lipid this protein, carbohydrate, this macromolecules 
are not present in a pure form but they are conjugated that lipoprotein, glycoprotein and such type of complex formation, uh, formation is there in such type of structure which is giving the extra protection to the cell and if we say you see this is the phospholipid layer and phospholipid bilayers are there. So, here you see this is a hydrophilic end of this lipid that means if we write the structure we can find that this it is it has got two uh, in one is the polar another is the non-polar. So, this is the hydrophilic zone and this is the hydrophobic zone. So, when we are talking about this polar end, this is the hydrophilic in nature and non-polar end is the hydrophobic in nature. So, when this lipid molecules are and below this is the cytoplasmic fluid. So, obviously they are arranged in such a way that hydrophilic moieties are exposed to this liquid portion, aqueous portion of the cell and hydrophobic uh, portions are away from this particular environment. And this way there are different uh, this uh, integral proteins that is peripheral proteins and uh, integral proteins of which are the glycoprotein, glycolipid, oligosaccharides etcetera are present and they they arrange themselves in such a way that they give extra protection to the cell wall of this bacteria. Now, below this is the cytoplasm. Now, we are now coming to the cell pool of this particular bacteria. Now, if we see the particular bacteria, then it is the cytoplasmic fluid where this cell pool is there ribosome is there, granules are there and the chromosomes or the nuclear membranes or the nuclear genetic materials are there. Now, we have already learned the outer covering portions which are giving the protection to the internal cell pool. Now, when we are coming to this internal cell pool, we are talking about the liquid or the fluid and in most of the cells two third is the liquid or the fluid which is present. That means, here also we can find that 70 to 80 percent water is there in this particular cell, bacterial cell. It is a dense gelatinous solution of sugar, amino acid and salt. It serves as the solvent for material used in a in all cells cell functions. If we come to this ribosome, ribosome is made up of 60 percent ribosomal RNA and 40 percent protein. It consists of two subunit, one is the large subunit, another is the small subunit. In prokaryotic ribosome, we can see that this large subunit it is the crown like structure and small subunit is the kidney shaped structure and here this bigger one is the 50 A's and smaller one is the 30 A's and when this 30 A's and 50 A's is coming and forming this complete shape of this ribosome it is the it is helping in protein synthesis and this is the mRNA. And when this number of ribosomes are coming and attaching, we are calling it as polysome. And this is the site of protein synthesis. All bacterial cells have this ribosome. <coughs> now, coming to this mesosome. Mesosome is the infolding of plasma membrane of the cell. Mesosomes are formally believed to be the equivalents of mitochondria of higher cells. It is thought to be the center of respiratory activities of the cell. Besides this mesosome, 
we have the storage can granule. The nutrients and reserves are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of granules in biomolecules such as glycogen, lipid, polyphosphate or in some cases sulfur and nitrogen which are there is also getting accumulated in this in, in the form of a storage granule. Now coming to this nuclear as I have told that primitive type of nuclear genetic material is there. This nuclear is irregularly shaped as no nuclear membrane is there within the cell of all prokaryotes which has nuclear material without any nuclear membrane and it is here it is the main controller of the uh, genetic material and th here this genetic materials are localized. Now coming to this plasmid, in this prokaryotes it is very very important to have this unique structure of this plasmid. This is the circular DNA besides this nuclear uh, material we have a small circular double stranded DNA which is present and it is free or integrated into the chromosome. It can be duplicated and passed on to the offspring. It is not essential to bacterial growth and metabol metabolism. It may encode the antibiotic resistance, tolerance and toxic material, enzymes and toxins. It is used in the genetic engineering. That means this is a circular DNA. When it, we are just cutting it, this circular DNA, it becomes linear and then we are inserting the gene of our interest. Now, when the gene is getting and getting inserted, once again with the help of this ligase enzyme, we are just once again making it the, we are just joining this. And with the new incorporation of this gene, once again it is getting ligated and then we are just going for this expression of this gene in a particular system. And this way the new avenue of biotechnology has developed with this particular plasmid DNA. Now, endoplasm, endospore, endospore is one of this very unique structure where this bacteria can survive for years together. Now, it is a dormant form of bacteria, bacterial cell produced by certain bacteria when they are under starvation. The spore is resistant to adverse condition that, that, that means it can withstand high temperature and any adverse situation that is high uh, organic solvent or any such uh, drastic environmental condition. The spore cytoplasm is dehydrated and contain calcium dipicolinate and which is involved in the heat resistance of the spores. So, here if we see the structure that cytoplasm is getting dehydrated gradually and spore cores are formed that means we can find the intermembrane followed by the cortex followed by the outer membrane spore coat and the exosporium and here this spore spore cores are so resistant that any under any drastic condition this bacteria can withstand and under normal environmental condition this spore cores are getting open up and this bacteria can once again reproduce. So, this is the spore formation of bacteria. Now, some of the example of these spores are the bacillus stereothermophilus. It is the spore used for the quality control of heat sterilization equipment. Bacillus anthracis that is the spore used for biological war warfare. 
Now, in conclusion, what I would like to tell you that if we classify the entire bacterial world, then we can classify this bacteria into gram positive, gram negative and the bacteria which is not having any cell wall and we can divide this as this not having cell wall as I have mentioned that mycoplasma is one of that example. Now, when we are classifying this bacteria based on the spore formation, then we can classify, we can further divide it the exospore, endospore and non-sporulating bacteria. When we are talking about the endospore based on its position, once again we can divide it into terminal, central or subterminal. Bacteria, bacterial world can once again be divided into different group based on its shape. That is the rod shaped, spherical or cocker, spiral that is and the comma shaped bacteria. Based on the classification, the bacterial classification which are there based on its arrangement that is the rod shaped bacteria can further be divided into cocobacillus that is diplobacillus and streptobacillus. So, here this whether one rod, two rod or group of rods are there. So, these are the classification. When we are talking about the spheres, then it is diplococcus that means two cocci are arrange, arrange. here streptococci a chain of bacteria, it is forming a chain like structure and staphylococcus cocci where a bunch of just like grapes, the bunch of bacteria are attached together and it can be also spiral, it can be the comma shaped bacteria. What we have learned that bacteria can be classified based on the oxygen requirement and this bacteria may be aerobes, may be anaerobes and microaerophilic. It may be facultative aerobes, it may be obligate aerobes where this type of uh, uh, bacteria for their growth oxygen is must. In case of obligate aerobes, this oxygen is too much toxic, they do not need any trace of oxygen and some are microaerophilic. That means, it can grow either in high oxygen demand or in stress oxygen demand. So, these are the classification based on oxygen requirement. When we are classifying this bacteria based on the temperature, we can once again divide it into psychrophilic that means cold loving, mesophilic normal moderate temperature loving bacteria, thermophilic that means here they need higher temperature that means temperature requirement is more than 50 degree to 70 degree centigrade hyperthermophiles that means here the temperature it this group of bacteria can withstand very high temperature normally 70 to 90 degree or so some reports are there that some bacteria can withstand up to 140 degree centigrade based on the ph requirement the bacterial world can be divided into acidophiles that is acid loving bacteria, neutrophiles that means in neutral pH condition they are surviving, alkalophiles that is the in alkaline condition these bacteria are very very comfortable to grow. Based on the carbon sources, the bacteria can be once again divided into autotroph and heterotrophs. Autotrophs are once again divided into photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs. That means, cyanobacteria, there this cyanobacteria has got this uh, uh, your chlorophyll within it and they can synthesize their own food. In case of chemoautotrophs, they need some inorganic sources for their normal behavior in the form of nitrate, iron, sulfur, and so on. And methanogens are one of such example of this chemoautotrophs. 
heterotrophic bacteria they need external carbon and media contained for their growth. Now, if we see this classification of bacteria based on the flagellar arrangement, then we can find that it can be the monotrichus that is one flagella in one end, lophotrichus a bunch of flagella in one end, amphitrichus the flagella in both polar ends and peritrichus throughout the body the uh, flagella is attached and sometimes no flagellar arrangement that is the atrichus. And these are the classification of bacteria and what we have learnt about the entire bacterial world. These informations are very, very essential for all of you when will be you will be working with the bacterial system and when you will be going for any metabolite production using bacteria as one of the living cell. And there if we have this information, it will be very easy for us to select the group of bacteria, the group and the, if we know their nature, it will be very easy for us to select the system, the type of bacteria, what we need for our metabolite production. And thank you very much. Thank you.